Hi everybody, this is Jason from the Milli Paramilitary 2 Para 3 Club, and I have three interesting knives that I wanted to tell you about. And I don't know that I've ever seen all three of them in the same video, so I thought this might be a unique perspective on these three, and uh, why don't we get into it right now. I have them arranged from left to right in order of uh, expense. This knife is the least expensive of the three, the Capara. The Capara street price is around $200 if you can find it. These knives are rather hard to find, and they tend to be out of stock everywhere, but it is a current production model. The knife in the center is a Spidey Chef. Spidey Chef street price is around $235. Uh, also, can be difficult to get. It tends to come in and out of the market in bursts. It is a standard production model. The knife on the right is known as the Drunken, and the Drunken is the most expensive and the fanciest of the three, and this knife is going to come in at about $440. So, looking at all three of them, playing with all three of them this week, um, I've noticed that this knife style is really interesting to me because I'm coming from a place where I've been using lots of uh, sort of boxy, boxy style knives, and these knives all have a really interesting ergonomic feature to them. Number one, I know that of two of the three, the way that the knife feels in the hand while performing tasks like cutting food was top of mind to the designer. With this knife, the Capara, uh, designed by Alistair Phillips from Australia, the Capara was designed to be an everyday carry knife that would be elegant and beautiful and easy to carry, but also it would be very, very comfortable to hold. And most importantly, it's the type of pocket knife that you can have with you to help you eat your lunch. Now, if that's not purpose-built, I don't know what is. That's a fantastic design criteria right there. How do I have a pocket knife that I can use to cut my hamburger in half? Having owned a Capara for some time, I can tell you that this knife is really good for that purpose. First of all, the way the handle sits in the palm of the hand is incredible. The, the way that the handle falls away here, but you still have a great grip on this side, combined with the curve yeah, that banana shape, right? The fact that it has that curve in it, what that allows you to do is really get a comfortable grip on the knife, but then your hand is in a great position where you can cut food on a plate or on a cutting board, and your knuckles aren't gonna be banging into the tabletop. Another thing that's great is if you go to your kitchen and look at your chef's knife right now, you're probably gonna find this very similar uh, shape to the blade. And the reason for that is it allows you to chop and rock as you cut. The Capara gives you that. This is a knife that really offers a lot of value and a lot of bang for the buck, it really does. We have this beautiful carbon fiber scales. They're smooth to the touch, but you have a really great looking carbon fiber mounted to liners. We have a liner lock, excuse me, a compression lock, not a liner lock, this is a compression lock. Um, we have a backspacer here and then a really nice wire clip, which makes this knife very, very carryable. Um, really a wonderful knife to carry. S30B steel is standard on this model. There's only been one variation in this, one style of this knife so far. There hasn't been a variation yet um, available from the Taiwan factory in Taichung. This is a phenomenally nice knife. The grind is terrific. The full flat grind from a fairly, fairly narrow stock gives this knife a really great sliceability. This is a very slicey knife. The point is still awfully sharp and great for getting into little spots. Um, you can choke up on the knife and get close to the blade. By the way, this is a 3.6 inch blade and it it looks large when you're holding it. Um, the 3.6 inches is really maximized on this blade. There's very little choil here. So with this size of knife, you're gonna find that this knife is a lot of cutting power, but folded up and in the pocket, it doesn't take up a lot of space. I can't say enough good things about the Capara. If you haven't held one, you really should. Um, deploys nice, folds up nice. My only complaint about this knife is that it's awfully easy to cut yourself. I find that with a compression lock knife, I tend to disengage the lock and then let the blade fall. And on the Capara, that blade will, will just guillotine right down on the back of your finger. 
So when I carry this knife, I tend to get a lot of cuts here on the back of my knuckle. Well, that's my fault. That's not the knife's fault, but um, you just gotta be careful, it'll bite you. So overall, the Capara is a wonderful knife. It's a wonderful everyday carry. You won't find yourself wishing you had more blade and you definitely won't miss all the extra bulk that comes from other knives in this style and in this, in this category. So this is easily a knife that is difficult. It's difficult to find this much bang for the buck from other manufacturers for that price. So variation on a theme, we're gonna move over to this knife. This is the Spidey Chef. In a previous knife, I've shown this Spidey Chef and one thing that I think that this knife does in spades is I think it competes with the, um, I think this knife competes directly with Chris Reeves knives. Uh, we have titanium on the scales. We have a fantastic LC200N steel. LC200N of course is a steel where they've optimized the stain resistance of the blade. LC200N is a phenomenally good kitchen knife steel, and the Spidey Chef is designed to be a kitchen knife. So similar to the Capara, we have a very similar shape here, uh, making the knife very comfortable in the hand. Your hand position is naturally going to fall here, which means your prime position for cutting and slicing and chopping. Um, the blade swoop and the angle of the blade compared to the handle means that when you're cutting in this direction, you're gonna have lots of space here for your knuckles. So you can see that this is sort of a similar design thing, isn't it? Uh, we have a nice swoopy blade and we have a, an edge angle that's very different from the handle. So um, this knife is going to be really a fantastic cutting experience. Now, the reason I think that this knife competes with the Chris Reeve knives is that it sort of has that similar Spartan titanium look to them. Um, however, where this knife deviates from the Chris Reeve, um, this knife actually opens and closes easily, and it's lighter weight. Uh, also, at a fraction of the price of a Chris Reeve knife, it's harder to justify moving up to that CRK. If you're going to be using a knife to baton through wood in the middle of the woods, I don't know that this is the right choice for you. This is probably not the right choice. But for an everyday carry, suburban lifestyle, or for somebody who wants a multi-purpose uh, from the kitchen to the pocket um, to the boardroom. This is a really nice little choice. Um, pretty decent in the pocket. It doesn't weigh a lot. Um, I believe I weighed it in at 4.9 ounces. So it's, um, it's a really not a very heavy knife overall. Similar pocket clip, uh, the wire style pocket clip. This is a very polarizing clip. People either love it or hate it. I personally like it because I find that if you bend it, it's easy to fix. Titanium clips are not as easy to fix. Um, also, it really dis disappears into the pocket and doesn't look ridiculous. It doesn't tear up your jeans. And um, really, it's just going to be inconspicuous. There are times where you want to show off the Spidey on the clip, and there are times where you don't. This is definitely a knife where you don't have to if you don't want to. Uh, designed by Marsan Slintz. Sliz, excuse me. Um, he is probably best known for doing the buoy which is a fantastic Spyderco as well. Um, at $235, I think you're going to have a hard time finding a titanium frame lock knife that does more um, and give you such a feature-laden knife. Really fantastic. I also own a Chris Reeve, and I can tell you between the two, this one is easier to carry, it's more fun to carry, it's more fun to deploy. Um, I don't need a hard-use knife in my life. I'm not a hard-use knife kind of guy. I'm uh, not going camping much in my life. So this is really just something that I need for residential chopping. So let's move on to the third knife. The fanciest of the three, probably the most um, elaborate and difficult to manufacture. This is the Drunken. This is a Bill Sinkovich design. And um, I didn't know this until recently, but the reason it's called the Drunken is because of the carve that's put into the titanium and also into the carbon fiber. Uh, this wavy pattern actually has a really nice texture to it. It feels like a fingerprint. I'm trying to get this close so you guys can see it. You see that? It feels like a fingerprint. It gives you fantastic grip without making the knife look silly and without um, putting lots of scoring in it. Um, it really looks wonderful. It's very fancy. 
and it feels great in the hand. Here we have carbon fiber with the same drunken pattern. Um, one positive side again is the grip, but one downside is you don't really see the carbon fiber as much. Um, it's a lot more difficult to see that in the shimmer. Um, this is another knife that honestly, I think if I were to do like, you remember those silhouette drawings where mom would make you sit down for, you just stand against the wall and they put a piece of paper up and then somebody with a piece of, uh, I don't know, charcoal would, would sketch it, you know what I'm talking about? I think if you did that with these two knives, you'd find that they're almost the same. They really are. So what I'm curious about, maybe one of you knows the answer. I wonder how two different knife designers came up with that same profile at the same time. I wonder if there was some sort of common shared design concept and they both sort of went in different directions with the same design. I wonder if that's how it happened. Maybe somebody had a rough draft and they both ran with it. Um, I do love the way that this knife looks. Isn't that sharp on this angle right here? You can see this beautiful line here, the way that it passes through the spidey hole. Um, really cool. The drunken, boy, the drunken is very, very similar to the spidey chef in that it has this really nice blade angle. Uh, the angle is very different from the handle. So um, as you hold it, you're gonna get lots of clearance for your fingers as you cut. So honestly, this is a very similar experience to the Spidey Chef, but everything is just much nicer. The grip in the hand is terrific. Uh, we have these champ we have these um, beveled edges around the outside of the handles, giving that uh, 3D look that makes it more comfortable in the hand. Um, honestly, this knife is much, much more comfortable to hold than the Spidey Chef. And then something else that I'm a huge fan of is the steel has been improved. On this knife, we have S90V steel. And S90V steel, quietly, might be the best steel available for pocket knives. Um, if you're a Spyderco fan, I think we tend to see S90V and we just keep moving because we just know that it's all over the place. But S90V is a steel that Spyderco always does well and they always reserve it for their favorite knives. Uh, their first sprint runs are almost always done in S90V. And if you, if you look at the charts and you look at the data and you look at all of my peers out there that, I shouldn't even call them peers, I'm a hack, but you know, the peers that are out there that do the steel testing, invariably you're gonna find that S90V is just a phenomenally good steel. Um, it's tough enough, it has tremendous edge retention and it is stainless. Um, adding to the wow factor, this knife has a stonewash blade and Spyderco's stonewash is awesome because it's actually shiny but it has this smoky look to it, and it makes it actually pretty easy to take care of. The way that I do it is I'll wipe it down from time to time with a little bit of flitz, and I find that the more I wipe it, the shinier it gets. And the shinier it gets, the more it repels uh, contamination and problems, and it just makes it look like a mirrored piece of smoky glass. So, really cool look. This is another knife that has a pretty terrific grind. Um, it is a little bit thicker at the spine, than, this, than the uh, Capara, for example, but um, it is a long blade and with a taper on it, uh, the behind the edge measurement is pretty small. There are a couple guys out there doing regrinds on these and I would love to try one. So um, I need to track down a couple members of the group that might have one and try it out. Um, the back of the knife has a really cool backspacer with an integrated uh, lanyard hole. And I appreciate the way that they did this rather than just putting a big uh, grommet through the back of the knife. This is really good looking. If you know anything about the Drunken, you probably know <clears throat> that everybody says the clip is terrible. And until I held this knife, I didn't really appreciate what everyone was talking about. I just thought people were, were complaining about the, the sharpness of it or the, the point on the clip or what have you. But um, I found out today why this clip is, is much maligned. It's just too damn close to the knife. There's not enough cap back here that if, if you were to put this in a pair of blue jeans, especially a nice pair of jeans with really thick, beefy denim, the kind that you know, you're not supposed to wash, uh, you put those in some raw denim jeans and you're not gonna have any ability to clip it at all. It's not gonna ever get down there. Um, today I was wearing a pair of shorts and I tried to clip it on the pocket and it couldn't even get close to clipping it. And the material was rather thin. It should have clipped on just fine. So I only know of one clip maker that's making 
uh, a replacement, and it seems like he made one run and then he stopped, and they're very difficult to get. So I've heard of guys rebending this to make it more usable. I think if I were to want to carry this knife all the time, that's something that I would do, uh, because in its current state, this knife just doesn't like to go in the pocket very well. Um, I've heard that the, the tip on the point bothers people. Uh, so far, this, this hasn't bothered me. Um, maybe with everyday carry, it would bother me more. But um, overall, I just I have nothing but positive things to say about this knife. It's well made. It feels great in the hand. It's comfortable to use. It cuts like a demon. And really, this is another knife at $440. I think you would have a hard time going to other manufacturers and finding something that's better for what it is, right? There's going to be better choppers. There's going to be better um, beefy knives. You're probably going to find a better slicer, maybe. But combining all of these features together, and something else that I forgot to mention earlier, on the, on the frame lock, we have the stainless steel insert, which means you're going to get really nice lock and unlock without a stick. Makes it very, very nice to open and close this knife. So in my knife group, we often get asked, I'd say at least once a week, if not more, people get asked, how good are the Taichung knives? How good are they versus the golden knives? Are they any good? Do I want a Chinese made knife? Um, the answer that I would say to that is these knives made in Taiwan, not mainland China, in my mind, that's a big distinction. Taiwan is a free country where they have elections <laughs> and they have a bustling economy and they have wonderful craftsmen who make incredible knives. And I, I feel like these knives are phenomenally well made. Um, the fit and finish is excellent. The, the attention to detail is excellent. I've never picked up a Taichung knife and found that they were deficient or sloppily built. So um, I really wouldn't care one way or the other where it was made because these are really impeccable. So at $200, $235, $440, here we have a, oh gosh, just a one, two, three of more or less a similar design. In my mind, these knives are really ideal for cutting food, for food prep, for really having a nice slicing experience. And if you haven't tried them yet, I encourage you to go out and check them out for yourself and see what you think. So these knives were brought to you today courtesy of Cutlery Shop. CutleryShop.com is where you can go. You can find all of these and many more Spydercos. Um, Cutlery Shop was kind enough to loan these to me so that I could check them out for the video. And uh, thank you very much, Jeff. I appreciate it. Um, thanks for watching. If you guys have any questions, you're always welcome to join us in our group. We're the, we're the Spyderco Millie Paramilitary 2 Para 3 Club. You'll find us on Facebook. You'll find us on Instagram. And uh, we'd love to have you join. So thanks for watching.